What's going on, people of the internet? Hyper Chaotic here with a K, double R, and welcome back or welcome if this is your first time visiting my channel. And yes, your eyes do not deceive you. I am about to react to a fan made what if crossover between Captain America from the MCU Avengers and Call of Duty Zombies. Now, in case anybody is watching this and is not familiar with the MCU or Call of Duty Zombies, I will explain a bit of information as I go along, as I am a fan of both. Now, I am a bit more of a fan of Call of Duty Zombies than I am of the MCU or anything Marvel related in general. I have more experience with COD Zombies and more knowledge of COD Zombies than I do of the MCU or, again, anything Marvel, but I am a fan of both. So when I pause in between to give my commentary and talk about the stuff I like within this video, I will, you know, give a little bit of information about each franchise characters and whatnot in case anybody who's watching doesn't know about one or the other. So let it be known for those who are fans of both, please bear with me. I'm taking into consideration for those who might not know much about one or the other. Because there definitely are plenty of people who probably know what Marvel is and have even played Call of Duty. But they don't touch the zombies or they just don't really do the Easter eggs so they know nothing of the story. It's amazing how many people play Call of Duty zombies but don't even know there is a story. But nonetheless, we're going to move forward. But before we do, let it be known that I will have the video linked in the description down below so if you want to see it for yourself first without me constantly interrupting to commentate which it's a reaction video so expect it then go ahead and see it for yourself first and of course give your engagement to the creator and if you have any suggestions feel free to let him know because he does take what if suggestions i might react to another video from him later on in the future because he's doing another one that's a crossover between Child's Play and, get this, Toy Story. Now, if for some reason, once again, there are people out there who are not familiar with either Child's Play or Toy Story. But you probably know what the Chucky doll is, at the very least. And some people out there, I'm pretty sure, probably know Woody and Buzz either from the trailers or, mm, I don't know, maybe memes. Let's just say probably memes, because I remember seeing uh, some Toy Story memes here and there, perhaps. But nonetheless, you have two franchises where a kid named Andy has toys that come to life. Well, one has one toy that comes to life. Another one has several toys that have their, you know, sentience though with that one the toys hide their sentience the other one well, well he does hide the sentience for a little bit to mess with people because he likes to kill them but eventually he does say fuck it eh, i pretended long enough you know let me just go ahead and show you that i'm alive but if for some reason you've never seen those films before i recommend seeing them and, well, films, franchise, I should probably see. You got several Child's Play films, several Toy Stories. But, man, I, I definitely got to check out that one because I thought about that idea before. You know, like, what if Andy from Toy Story got freaking Chucky from Child's Play? And the fact that somebody's making a what if, this guy's going to make that what if. <laughs> it's pretty freaking awesome. I'm a little ecstatic. So, without further ado... Let's hop right into it. Ooh. That is a bit loud. Now note, if you ever see in a video me lowering the volume and you don't see any audible change, that's because it's only lowering the volume for me. When I lower the volume, it doesn't affect the internal audio recording at all. What if events went differently? What if Captain America had traveled 
to the Call of Duty Zombies timeline. Now, right off the bat, the B footage he's using is pretty freaking fire. Granted, I'm pretty sure the B footage is AI. I don't know what the chances are that maybe he's using fan art. But if he was, he probably would have left credit, you know, on screen. Because I have seen videos that used fan art before in what ifs or like commentary videos or analysis or, you know, history or explanation of a character or franchise, whatever that character, franchise, yada, yada may be. But usually those people are going to give credit if they do. I don't see no credit. So I'll... I can only assume this is probably not fan art. And there's a good chance that the B footage in this video is AI. Now, I personally do not have a problem with that because that's all it is. It's B footage, background footage. And chances are he couldn't find the assets for himself. He would have had to make them from scratch. And chances are if he had to make them from scratch, he neither had the skills nor the budget to pay somebody with the skills to make them from scratch. Not too many people in this comment section seem to care either, which I'm glad. Again, it's just B footage. It's just background assets. He still makes his own videos. He still does his editing as far as I know, his writing as far as I know, and of course his own voiceovers. So I hope people don't have a problem with him using AI generated B footage I sure as hell don't, but it's just something I wanted to point out because I do like the B footage in this video. But I can't give credit to anybody for it because it's most likely AI generated. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm going to double check the description if he even says anything about that. But again, I don't have a problem with it. I hope anybody else out there watching this doesn't have a problem with it. It's, it's just background assets. That's it. Imagine a scenario where the Avengers collect the Infinity Stones across time, but something happens. Imagine if Captain America was lost through space and time after he traveled through the Quantum Realm. Now things would be very interesting from here as we would place Captain America with the premise crew in Call of Duty Zombies. Now, since he mentioned space and time, and this is the part where I'm actually going to start talking about, you know, the lore between these two franchises. And forgive me if it sounds like I end up saying some things twice or something sound very similar when I talk about the other franchise. Because both these franchises do some things that are similar, all right? So, a quick rundown. For those of you out there who are not completely familiar with what happened in the MCU, at least near Endgame, Thanos wins. He gets the Infinity Stones, slaps them on the gauntlet, erases half of life in the entire universe. We don't ever really get a chance to see how it affects people because they don't look into that in any films or TV shows, such a missed opportunity. And for what we do get to see, for whatever uh, affects the snappity, as it was known in the film. Uh, whatever effects it did have, we only got to see what it, it did on Earth. We never get to see how the snappity affects other planets in the solar system, in the universe, I mean. Not the solar system, the universe. Which, again, is really such a missed freaking opportunity to do some new stuff within the MCU, but I digress moving on. Eventually, they decide to get the Infinity Stones. How? Because if you remember, or if you don't know, Thanos destroyed the stones using the stones. So how can we get the stones if the stones are destroyed? We can't reverse time using the time stone to get the stones like he did in the previous film. He destroyed the stones, including the time stone. So what do they do? They managed to figure out time travel using, I guess, the quantum realm. I'm, I don't even, like somehow they basically loop back around to a certain point in time, but like in the past, don't try to think about it too hard because <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm frying my brain just trying to explain it. And when they take the infinity stones, 
and ends up creating a alternative reality that branches out from that universe. So an alternative timeline slash universe, kind of like one and the same. That has the same infinity zones, but it's a variance of that. And now with Call of Duty Zombies, we got soldiers using this special element from space, this special pretty glowing rock. Sounding familiar so far? They use it to make special weapons. Turns out they could also use it to travel through space and time. So they use it to make teleporters. And on top of all that, they use it to make this machine called the Pack-a-Punch, which can make your weapons pack a punch or give them special abilities um apparently they somehow use it in alchemy type elixirs and drinks that can give people special abilities i.e perka colas for those of you who are not familiar with cod zombie lures those are the little sodas that the characters drink the perka colas literally special ability sodas because they're infused with some element 115 like, imagine if, if if the Avengers got some special abilities by just crushing up the fucking Infinity Stones. <laughs> Forgive me for laughing, but chances are, just by describing that, you're probably freaking picturing that one meme, that edited meme of, uh, what was his name, man? That, that drug lord, that freaking game leader from Breaking Bad. Because <laughs> that one dude on YouTube made an edit with him. Uh, just crushing out the Infinity Stones, taking a freaking pu uh, a sniff, and just like tight, 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 tight. If you know what the fuck I'm talking about, <laughs> you know. If you know, you know. So forgive me. That's why I'm laughing because that just came to my mind for even saying that. But imagine if somebody crushed up the Infinity Stones, made a special drink, a special elixir, drank it, and somehow they gained these special abilities because they used this special alchemist type recipe. Think of like when a witch makes a special potion. It's like. Oh, bring me the freaking, I don't know, tail of a newt, um, eye of an ogre, the toenail of, of, I don't know, a fucking goblin or something like that. The most wackest fucking ingredients. They, they, and just by using Element 115 and all these special items and abilities. You know what? Let's save this part. Because the point I'm trying to get to is, they both like to loop in time. Essentially changing the timeline completely. Now, what would Captain America do? What could he offer the premise crew in this? Now, some people might hear that and think, what does he mean change the timeline completely? Because within the MCU, when they did that, it was completely ineffective. Completely ineffective. It will make an alternative reality as i just stated but the original timeline for the most part stays ineffective mainly because the tva deals with the alternative realities of course but with call of duty zombies they make it very clear you should not fuck with time using element 115 because you can completely alter reality alter the timeline now there's a good chance it could just create an alternative timeline but it can also just completely change the original which we have seen before with the recreation of original black ops one maps in black ops i believe three and four where they even change some of the dialogue i believe now they bring back some of the original easter eggs but i think they do leave some of the original dialogue and they add some new dialogue to basically represent that although it's the same events from the first Black Ops Zombies map within Kino the Toten, things have become completely changed because they altered the timeline. They have literally done this before in COD Zombies. Zombies timeline. 
Now, Multiple it would times. be an interesting scenario, and this sort scenario of. has been in my head for years. I've always wanted to do a Captain America crossover storyline with the Primus crew. I would love to do the Ultimus crew. A lot of people don't know that I am a massive Call of Duty Zombies fan. I used to love watching all of the lore, the storylines, everything in between, and I thought we gotta finally cover this for this Halloween episode. So if you guys are new to the channel, I would highly recommend to subscribe, like, share, and turn those notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. But that being said, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, let's dive into the brand new Marvel's What If crossover video. Captain you know, that's kind of a fun concept to think about, because if you really think about it, what are the watchers? They are literally these dimensional beings from a completely different dimension above the reality of really any Marvel Universe. And they can literally just watch people without being seen. It's like, think of like a fourth dimensional being looking down at us, but we can't see them because we're third dimensional beings who cannot see within the fourth dimension. Now, what the third dimension, fourth dimension, dimensions in general are in real life is different than how you know, stuff like that is represented in, in, in the MCU or Marvel in general, or anything related to comics. Especially since stuff like dimensions, realms, worlds, universes, timelines sometimes, may all be used, you know, interchangeably with each other in such properties. Especially within the MCU. They're, they're all used interchangeably with each other. They sometimes, or more often than not, mean the same shit to a degree. But, nonetheless, the best way to look at it is we are third dimensional beings. And since we look at them on a screen, a 2D screen, to us, they are basically two dimensional creatures. Even though we create them in our minds when we write our stories or we envision it in our heads when we listen to other stories like we are right now. They do not actually exist, but for the time being while we're envisioning them, while we're creating them, they are almost alive in a sense. And we are the watchers from the other realm, the other dimension, that gets to watch it all unfold. And we can never interact or intervene mainly because it's physically impossible and the closest you can ever get is writing your own story, which will only make an alternative reality of said stories you read if you try to remake a version of it or anything inspired by it. America, alongside the rest of the Avengers, was preparing to time travel to specific best. points in the past to retrieve the Infinity Stones. They had mapped out their plan meticulously, with Cap tasked to collect the Mind Stone from the Battle of New York in 2012. Suited up and ready, he stood with his teammates on the Quantum Platform, preparing to jump through time to save the universe from its darkest fate. Instead of arriving in the correct timeline, he found himself in a dark, dilapidated theater, surrounded by an eerie... Okay, now pause... Pause right here, because really quickly, I just got to nitpick this part. Now, I got to be honest real quickly, this is not my first viewing of this video. This is actually my second-ish viewing of it. Nonetheless, this is something I just want to nitpick real quickly, but let it be known, I do genuinely like this video as a whole. I love it. I love that somebody even did a crossover between, you know, Marvel and Call of Duty Zombies, even if it's done by a fan. But I have to nitpick this real quick because he says he ends up in a, in, in, in a what a dilapidated theater. I already know what he's referencing. It sounds like Kino Der Toten. And for those of you who don't play Call of Duty Zombies or just don't know the lore, Kino Der Toten, I believe, in English was like what? Theater of the Undead, Cinema of the Undead, something of the Undead. Basically referencing the dead and the map that you're playing on, which is a theater. A rundown theater during Nazi occupation, or at least during World War II. But here's the thing, for those of you who know the lore, 
as you can already tell from that thumbnail and as he will state multiple times. Captain America is going to wind up with the premise crew. He's on Kino der Tolkien with the premise crew. And I just want to know, how the hell did they end up there? Now, given that the premise crew of all people would most likely have something like the summoning, the, ugh, excuse me, the, su the summoning key. Why, why did I struggle to say that? And because they have the summoning key, they would have no problem, just like with an actual teleporter, traveling through space and time. For those of you out there who don't know what the summoning key is, it's this very special artifact, for lack of a better way to describe it, that can help them travel through different alternative timelines and realities forward and back in time and apparently even suck up souls I have no time to even get into that but <laughs> I should you not element 115 or anything powered by it especially the summoning key element 115 is like all the infinity stones in one the summoning key is like the fucking infinity gauntlet harnessing that power that ability Though apparently I think it actually has to be recharged every now and then. I may have to uh, double check that. So I can't confirm or deny that. Don't quote me on that. So with such a device like the summoning key, they could have no problem traveling to Kino Der Tokten in the ultimate timeline. But this still begs the question of why are they there? I can understand how they got there. I mean, hell, this is something they actually do in Call of Duty Mobile. The premise crew is still alive. They're stuck in the dark ether. They've been traveling through space and time to try to get the fuck out. And find a new home just like their previous one. But they can't leave for whatever reason. Somebody shut off the summoning key. Maybe we'll break that down in a future video if I feel like it. But knowing that's possible because of the lore of Call of Duty Mobile, I know that in Call of Duty Zombies in general, they can easily travel to Kino Der Tolkien. So I'm not worried about the how. I really want to know the why. What are they doing there? Why are they there? What the fuck is the premise crew doing in Kino Der Tolkien? And remember, this is not my first viewing. He never says this in the video. I don't know if he ever decided to come up with the reason why they were there. Maybe he wants to continue it. I don't know if he ever plans on doing so. But it really makes me wonder, why are they there? The Victus. I'm sorry, not the Victus. Sorry to my Cod, uh, Cod Zombros. The Ultimate crew should be in Kino Der Tokten. And for those of you who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, Victus, Ultimus, Premise, don't worry about the Victus crew. They're in Black Ops 2. The Ultimus crew are the original crew we're introduced to back in, I think, technically World at War with, uh, what was it, Verrucked? They were introduced in? But most people already got their uh, an introduction to the original crew in Kino Der Tolkien in Black Ops 1. And I guess the best way to describe them between the premise crew, because the premise crew are the Ultimus crew from an alternative reality. They are also the younger versions of them. And most importantly, just like their Ultimus counterpart, they are soldiers. One of them is a scientist. But premise are the crew from the First Great War. Ultimus is from the Second Great War. Ultimus is when the events related to Call of Duty Zombies happen in Ultimus. Premise is an alternative reality where it happened sooner in the first Great War instead of the second. But the funny thing is, that's actually the origins and what leads to the events happening somehow in Ultimus, even though Ultimus is where it triggers the, it's confusing as fuck, trying to even describe the events in the timeline 
because shit's cycling into each other. But yeah, there's an alternative version of the crew that should be in Kino they're told to. Not the premise crew. And since it's his story, I don't really have a problem with the premise crew being there. I just want to know why. I want more to the story. Stillness. The air smelled of rot, and the crumbling walls told a story of long abandoned ruin. This place felt like it had been untouched for years, yet something unnatural stirred. The groan started softly but grew louder as shadowy figures emerged from the darkness. The creatures approaching him were not human. They were corpses walking with jerky, unnatural movements. Their decaying flesh and glowing eyes confirmed that these were zombies, not like any enemy he had ever faced before. Without hesitation, Captain America raised his shield, ready for a fight. The zombies shuffled toward him slowly at first, but soon more appeared, their numbers growing. Some lunged at him with terrifying speed, faster than he had anticipated. Can you imagine how easy it should be for him to take out some zombies with the super soldier serum? I mean, granted, for anybody who understands the lore, as well as the game mechanics, they do get stronger wave after wave to the point where, as seen in gameplay before, in later waves, they can get up to the point of being so durable where they can take a full magazine of an M1911 to the face, through the skull, through the brain, and still keep on moving. And for those of you who don't know, because I know... A lot of COD zombie bros out there are going to be like, Oh, the M1911, what do you freaking do? The weakest fucking pistol can't do shit to them. Yeah, the weakest fucking pistol, which is one of the best and most freaking powerful pistols in real life. 45 ACP. That, those, those are some fat fucking bullets, my guy. An M1911 in real life will fuck you up. And the zombies can take a full magazine of that to the brain in later rounds. Like it ain't shit. Probably two to three if you're around 15 to 20. Maybe more. That's how durable those fuckers can get. But with a vibranium shield. Against a rotting corpse. I mean he can do some serious fucking damage. Using his shield, Cap struck the closest zombies, knocking them to the ground with swift, powerful blows. But they kept coming, relentless in their attack. Each time one fell, more appeared, and soon he found himself fighting for his life. Surrounded by the undead, Captain America's instincts kicked in. He fought through the growing horde, using his shield to defend and attack in equal measure. The shield's hard edges crushed bones and broke limbs as he used it to bash zombies aside. The creatures were un- You know, all things considered, since this is the MCU version of uh, Captain America, right? This guy has done some pretty acrobatic shit. Dude knows how to do some straight up hardcore parkour. So I feel like once again, added to my point previously, Captain America should have no problem fucking up zombies or being able to get away from them. Well, sort of. Like, he could probably get on top of a roof to take a quick break before they come at him. But uh, if the zombies event in Warzone is anything to go by, those motherfuckers do got hops. In Warzone, they have been witness to jump as high as almost over four to five fucking stories. As in, they will literally get onto the roof of a four to five story building with one good yup into the fucking air. So, if you wanted to take a break from the zombies or start dealing with them one by one. He can get on a roof, let them do their little Super Mario jump and ding doing to get the fuck up there and he just kicks their ass right back the fuck down. 
and let gravity do the rest. Relenting, while slow, their numbers grew rapidly, and those that moved faster presented a real challenge. Cap threw a shield with precision, taking out several zombies at once, but they still... Look at this, look at this. Yeah, you can tell this is AI generated. What is this zombie in the back? This looks like a zombie that's slowly morphing into an apothecon, maybe. But the more I look at them, the more they kind of resemble, like... They almost look like the flood infected from Halo or... Or, like, the fucking... What are they called? Necro something, the Necromorphs, or whatever they're called, from uh, Dead Space. I've never played Dead Space before. I've only ever seen gameplay of it. Uh, but I have seen that they're a, a quote-unquote infected. And honestly, those in the background look like they resemble a Necromorph. Assuming, again, that's what they're called. More than it does a zombie. Like a regular zombie. Kept coming. As the battle continued, Cap noticed the variety of enemies around him. So uh, look at this, look at this. And the fucking arms coming out right here on his, what's technically his left side, your right if you're facing the screen. What is this, two heads? Right below the eagle? And then two arms? Like, yeah, this definitely looks like something the Flood or the Necromorphs would do. I'm Zombies moved in erratic, <laughs> frenzied bursts of speed. Lunge you know what? Since I mentioned those, ladies and gentlemen, if you think those fucking two infected types are fucking horrifying, you can only imagine how horrifying they would be if they got their hands on a fucking corpse, a zombie from Call of Duty Zombies, because, oh boy, you can only imagine how fucking terrifying they would be with Element 115 at him from all directions. These sprinters were far more dangerous than the slower, shambling zombies. Dodging their sudden attacks required all of Cap's agility, and he had to act fast to keep them from overwhelming him. Among the chaos, Cap spotted mutated zombies crawling on all fours, scuttling Nova across six. the floor like animals. Nova six, crawlers. These crawlers left a toxic gas in their wake when they were killed, forcing him to be cautious and avoid the area. And what's really crazy about these mutated zombies, for those of you who don't know, even Cod Zombros, some Cod Zombros out there probably don't know this. I didn't know this as of a few freaking years ago. I kind of got an idea back when I played 5, when I first got Black Ops 1, but I was like, nah, this wouldn't make any sense. They look nothing like the pigs on the map. What do I mean by that? Ladies and gentlemen, the Nova 6 crawlers are mutated pigs. Yeah, those things crawl on their hands and feet with long-ass fingernails, long-ass claws, those are pigs. Those are fucking pigs. They're fucking mutated. If that's a mutated pig, imagine what the fuck you can create if you mutated other animals. What the fuck would a bear look like? they contaminated, the situation became more precarious by the minute as the waves of undead pressed forward. Despite his skill, Cap found himself backed into a corner. Using his shield, he pushed the zombies back, creating space to maneuver. But the horde was growing larger, and he knew that he couldn't keep this up forever. For every zombie he took down, more rose to take their place. The relentless nature of the undead left him on edge, fighting for survival in this nightmarish world. As Captain America continued fighting, the types of zombies became even more varied and dangerous. He encountered hellhounds, fiery, undead dogs that moved with terrifying speed. These creatures exploded on impact, forcing Cap to use his shield not just as a weapon, God, I love the Hellhounds. You know, what, 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 what would Captain America get if he got a max ammo? Would his shield be repainted or some shit? 
I mean, I don't even know why he doesn't carry a gun around at this point. I mean, he doesn't have one right now. I know, you know, he he went into the quantum realm, not needed one, but later on he does meet up with the crew and he never bothers to pick up a gun, I think. And it's like, I don't see why you would have a problem using a gun because you, in the MCU, he had no problem using a gun. If this was like uh, Captain America from the animated shows, then yeah, I could see him not wanting to use a gun. But from the MCU, he was using a gun in his film. But as a means of... I'm surprised he hasn't picked up one by now or, 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 or had him go up to a wall and be like, what the hell is this? Who, who, who drew a gun on the wall in chalk? And as he goes to grab it, just a fucking gun appears in his hand. <laughs> Protection from their deadly blasts. The hellhounds were faster than anything he had faced so far and their explosive nature made them a constant threat. Then, from the shadows... Let me remind you that they're on Kino der Tolten. Captain America is supposed to be on Kino der Tolten, and... A panzer soldat appeared an enormous armored zombie with heavy weaponry. What the fuck is a panzer soldat doing on Kino der Tolten? Again, this is really just a minor nitpick. I do honestly like this video. But what the fuck is a Panzer Zoda doing on Kino der Toten? What the fuck is the premise crew doing on Kino der Toten? What's going on? This hulking figure moved like a tank, seemingly impervious to most attacks. Cap had to focus all his efforts on dodging its flamethrower and trying to find weak points in its armor. Each time he hit it with his shield, the Panzer Soldat seemed to slow down, but it wasn't enough to stop it entirely. The variety of zombies continued to surprise and challenge Cap. The Brutus, a massive, heavily armored zombie, required precision. This sounds like something that Call of Duty Mobile or the now dead Call of Duty Online would have done. Just taking all these different zombie assets and putting them into this one map that never had them. Because this is some shit that Call of Duty Mobile does right now and Call of Duty Online used to do. For those of you who never played Call of Duty Online or don't know what that is, that was a Chinese exclusive live service Call of Duty before they ever tried to do live service officially. And it was actually a good fucking game. It was actually a pretty freaking good game. I kind of miss that game, but it shut down now. COD Mobile's kind of like the closest you'll get to it ever again. But uh, this almost sounds like... Honestly, you know what? This might be the premise crew from Call of Duty Mobile. Or a variant of them from Call of Duty Mobile. Because to have all these zombie types fucking Brutus, the fucking Panzer, on Kino the Totem, with the premise crew... Th this is some fucking COD Mobile zombies shenanigans. Gen and forced to take down. It charged relentlessly, swinging heavy chains that could crush anything in their path. With each new wave of undead, Cap realized that this world's dangers were far beyond anything he had faced in his battles with Hydra or even Thanos' armies. With his combat training and resourcefulness, Cap managed to stay ahead of the Horde, using the environment to his advantage. He climbed to higher ground, using his shield to clear paths and knock enemies aside. But the zombie attacks were relentless, and despite his best efforts, Cap was beginning to tire. He knew he couldn't fight this battle alone for much longer. Just when Captain America seemed on the verge of being overwhelmed, a sudden barrage of gunfire cut through the noise of the groaning zombies. The tide of undead began to fall as precision fire and advanced weapons cut down the approaching horde. A group of heavily armed fighters appeared, moving through the battlefield with deadly efficiency. They were clearly veterans of this war against the undead. The Primus crew, Dempsey, Richtofen, Nikolai, and Takeo, entered the fray with their high-tech weapons and years... Man, I really, really, really wish he went with the Ultimus crew instead. Because I would have loved to 
know what banter he would have written between Captain America and Tank Dempsey. They're both soldiers from World War II out of time. The only true difference between them being one's a Marine and one's in the Army. For those of you who don't know, Cap's in the Army. Tank is a Marine. But I would have loved to hear the banter between the two. Just two soldiers out of time. It would be very interesting. And then I would love to know how it would go down, right? I would love to see Captain America interrogating Ultimus Richtofen. Because premise Richtofen, nothing. Chill dude. I could see Captain America getting along with him, no problem. You know, it during the uh, First Great War, you know, Germany was an enemy, even though America wasn't really a part of the war until near its end. But nonetheless, they were part of the, you know, enemy troops. Nonetheless, given what they're dealing with, that's, that's not important. That doesn't matter. But with Ultimus Richtofen, he would not hesitate to interrogate him on sight. Why? If you're asking why, I'm going to assume you know nothing about Call of Duty Zombies. Because Richtofen is a Nazi scientist. Ultimus Richtofen. Premise Richtofen that we can see right here. I'm going to have to edit in an arrow to show which one's Richtofen. Uh, he's a German one. I guess that doesn't really help now, does it? But that's why the arrow's there. But Premise Richtofen, just a scientist. Ultimus Richtofen, Nazi scientist. Though, as far as... I know he doesn't really care about the Nazi party and their goals. He just works for Group 935. And they just play the Nazi party in order to get funding for their research. But they have other secret groups within other governments. So they also have a group working for the Americans. The Russians. Probably the Brits. Why would they do this? Why would they have, you know, other groups working with their enemies and as well as their allies because they're also with the Japanese? It's because so they can spread out as much as possible, get funding from as many places as they can to do as much research on what they're researching and to make sure they can keep it private and safe because they don't really trust any government. They don't actually trust the Nazi government. They're just using them for their money to fund their research. But Ultimus Richtofen is not just dressed up like a scientist. He literally has the uniform of like an officer or a lieutenant with the Nazi armband included. So I can already see Captain America looking dead at Richtofen and being, ah, you must be one of Hydra scientists, aren't you? And I can see Richtofen looking at him and laughing. And one of two ways can go, can go, right? Either A, 935 and Hydra, you know, they know of each other, but they don't cooperate. They don't cooperate with each other, right? Or they're both so top secret that they know about neither of them. They don't know about each other. It's that secretive. So either Richthofen would look at him Maybe laugh and be like, who? Who the fuck is Hydra? I work for Group 935. Not that you would know that, because it's top freaking secret. Even you Americans never figured it out. Or, maybe Hydra and Group 935 know about each other. And Richtofen's just like, silly American. Hydra wishes that they could achieve half the scientific breakthroughs that 935 has accomplished. Because I don't really see Richthofen giving too much respect to Hydra or really caring about their goals and ambitions. He was just a mad scientist for the sake of being a mad scientist. And it's like, oh, what's that? You want me to wear a uniform and your armbands and you'll give me funding for the research? Yeah, that's fine. I'll wear your nice, very 
stylish uniform and your armband. I don't really care about your ambitions, but I'll do it. I mean, granted, that's not to say that Ultimus Richtofen probably wasn't an anti-Semite, but granted, it was, you know, the 1940s, and even before then, damn near everybody was an anti-Semite. Everybody was picking on the Jews, and they weren't picking on the blacks or the Irish or the Polish. <laughs> yeah. Everybody had their group that they were picking on. If they weren't picking on the Jews, they were picking on the Polish. If they weren't picking on the Polish, they were picking on the Irish. If they weren't picking on the Irish, they were picking on the blacks. That's just how it is, unfortunately, throughout history. Just There was always racism. It has existed forever, even anti-Semitism. So that's not to say that, you know, somebody like Richthofen probably wasn't an anti-Semite, but he probably didn't really care about the Nazis' goals, their ambitions. He probably wouldn't even take their eugenics serious. Given what such an advanced mad scientist he was, and he did do biological experiments as well, he had no problem experimenting on his own people. And he had... <laughs> he very much enjoyed hurting anybody he experimented on, even other freaking Germans. He did not get a flying fuck. He was fucked up in the head. He is literally a sexual fucking sadist. So I can absolutely see Richthofen not truly giving a damn about their eugenics. He would probably laugh at them, scoff at them, like, what is this eugenics about superior genes amongst the human race based on skin tone? This bullshit, fake, phony science that the Americans created. Yeah, you heard that correctly. The whole eugenics that the Germans used to get rid of the Jews, that shit was made up by America. And what they did was considered a dumbed down version of what America wanted to, wanted to do. But I could definitely see Rick Toffee, you know, not giving a fuck about this, all that stuff. He probably wouldn't even give a damn about Hydra's ambitions. He 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 was just a mad scientist for the sake of a mad of being a mad scientist to have the research, have the power for himself. So I could definitely see him being interrogated by Captain America and being, you know, talking to him, being like, what do you know of Hydra? And there's a chance either he doesn't know about Hydra or they know of each other, but they don't work with each other. Or maybe even Group 935 was so top secret that Hydra never knew about them. But Group 935 knew about Hydra. And the second he tells Captain America about Group 935... That's where things are going to get real interesting. Now, assuming he doesn't outright say he's not with Hydra, he's with Group 935, then chances are Captain America is going to be like, okay, so what branch of Hydra is that? Otherwise, if he just straight up says, I'm not with Hydra, I'm with Group 935, he's going to realize, oh, okay, different organization. Big whoop. What's so special about this from, that it's separate from Hydra? What are you guys working on? What special super weapons are you guys trying to cook up? And Rick Toffin just laughs at him and be like, Look around you, Captain. You done fought it. The undead are the new super weapon. Well, just one of them, of course. <laughs> they are actual wonder weapons within the game, such as the infamous Ray Gun, Thunder Gun, uh, and of course, pack a punch to Mustang and Zell, uh, Sally. Technically speaking, not official wonder weapons in in the sense of what we typically expect with Call of Duty zombies, but nonetheless, they could be considered wonder weapons, just given the wonder the weapons can do. <laughs> uh, all this babbling on about how much I would love to see Captain America just interrogate the Ultimus crew. Let's move on. Experience. Together, they quickly cleared the room, using their powerful wonder weapons to eliminate the zombies in bursts of energy. While Cap had fought valiantly on his own, the sheer firepower and expertise of the Primus crew turned the tide in a matter of minutes. I love how he says it. It's not Primus, it's Primus. I, mean, I don't know which way is technically the right way to say it. I'm not going to say the way he's saying it is wrong because I don't know which way is quote-unquote right either way, but I just think it's funny the way he says it. With 
the immediate threat neutralized, the Primus crew assessed the situation. They recognized Captain America as a valuable ally, but they also understood that he had no idea where he was or what he was up against. They quickly explained the situation. This world was overrun by zombies, the result of Element 115, a mysterious substance with the power to reanimate the dead. The true enemy behind the chaos, however, was a far more dangerous force, cosmic beings known as the... Now, of course, we can see that he's explaining it, and as, it's go as the story goes along, we're just supposed to assume that they've ex they're explaining all of this to the Cap, right? But again, why is Cap not interrogating them? Being like, what do you mean? What do you mean you, you, you brought the zombies back with Element 115? And Rex Topic just being like, well, you see, we found out that the special element has some special properties that could actually heal any and all wounds if you give it to a person alive. Unfortunately, your scientists got a little too curious and were wondering, well, if it could hear if, if it could heal any and all wounds if somebody's alive, what would happen if we give it to somebody who was dead? Would it bring them back to life and heal whatever it was that killed them? Turns out it brought them back, but not completely. And you might think, oh, now that they're a zombie, they're technically not all there. You know, that person's technically gone. <sighs> About that. Even though you're not all there, you're actually not gone. If you're actually brought back because of Element 115 being given to you after you're dead, it can actually trap your soul in your body, but without you ever having control or full control over your body. So you're just stuck in this corpse, basically with no control, like a puppet. And they do feel that they're dead. But of course, this is if they have element 115 in their system when they're dead. But I, I, I would absolutely expect Captain America to start interrogating them and wanted to know everything about Element 5. Like, okay, you're, you're saying it raised the dead, but you're also saying you used it to pack a punch your weapons? And you're also telling me that this special element that you used somehow brought the Apothecons out to play. Well, technically speaking, they probably don't even tell him that part, given that they give him a fucking elemental shard later. Apothecons. The Primus crew had been fighting these undead and the Apothecons for what felt like an eternity. And now, with Captain America on their side, they saw a glimmer of hope. Cap, always ready to face new challenges, joined forces with the crew, knowing that the fight ahead would push him to his limits. Together, they formed a plan to not only survive the zombie onslaught, but to take the fight to the Apothecons themselves. As they prepare- We're going to fight the war, Eddie. The Great War. My guy, how come you didn't specify it's literally the Great War they're fighting? Now, let's not get it confused, by the way. Because I know I just stated that the premise crew is from the first Great War, but I'm not talking about that Great War as in World War One, Because the real Great War within the Call of Duty Zombies timeline is the war that begins and ends all of time. The first war in history is the last war in history. It is the war that ends and begins time. Let that sink in. 